I'm Allison Jones. For those of you who don't know me, I'm the studio manager at Contemporary Craft. And I believe this is our sixth craft show and tell that we've had. We have one more scheduled for next Tuesday at one o'clock. Um, we potentially might continue these. We don't know exactly when we're gonna be able to get back into our building to be able to get everything set up and be um, preparing to welcome guests to our new facility in Lawrenceville. So probably about the time that that happens, we will have to um, maybe back off some of our online events for just a little bit, but we definitely are planning on continuing the craft show and tell in some form, even once we open and into the future. Uh, it might move to a once a month type of format, but we've really enjoyed the opportunity to um, get together with all of you on a weekly basis and share what we're making and um, have found it to just be a really nice break in the week. So it's something that we will definitely continue. We hope that you'll join us next week and into the future or whatever that schedule might be. And hopefully by next week, I'll know a little bit more about that. Um, we still have our fingers crossed for an August 1st opening for Contemporary Craft. Um, it will, of course, look a little different than we thought it would. We will probably have, you know, social distancing rules in place. There will most likely be a limit to the number of people that will be allowed into the building at one time. We, right now, it's really interesting with the construction crew still on site. When you walk into the vestibule of the building, there's a little QR code that you have to scan with the camera on your phone and that will take you to a tiny little form on your smartphone that you fill out where you can answer questions like if you have been sick, if you've been around anybody with COVID-19, um, all of these questions so they can keep track of who's come into the building, the contact that you have had with other people. Um, I don't know if something like that will continue once we open to the public, but um, there are still a lot of questions, but we're hopefully going to be opening August 1st with the social distancing protocols in place. Um, I assume that we will be having some of our studio workshops, maybe with smaller numbers and you know, physical space between people, but we're really looking forward to getting going um, finally in our new building in Lawrenceville. So um, we hope that you'll join us. In the meantime, we are planning to add many more online workshops to our calendar, um, just working on pinning down a few dates with a few um, instructors. So those should be coming soon as well. Um, okay, now I know we have all probably done this multiple times, but just in case, a couple of little Zoom rules that'll be helpful for today's session. Um, there will be a button on your screen that looks sort of like this for the gallery view. This will let you see everybody who's part of this session all on the screen at the same time. So that's really nice if we're just all chatting with each other. When we're sharing and somebody wants to show what they've been working on, the speaker view is a really great way to, to see that because whoever is talking will appear in the big screen and everybody else will be little boxes. So um, I suggest putting it on speaker view maybe for the duration of the session. Um, the mute button is very helpful because like I said, the screen will follow whoever is talking. So if there's background noise where you are, the screen will keep jumping to you even if you're not the one who is sharing at the time. So the mute button can be really helpful so that we can keep our focus on whoever is sharing. And then also the chat feature. This is how you can write in comments, you can uh, ask questions that way, and you can let me know that you would like to share a project that you're working on. So we would love to see your projects. I invite you to do that now and anytime throughout our session today. If you're ready to share, please just send me a little note. Um, we discovered last week too that there are a couple of people, depending on what device you're on, you might not have a keyboard to be able to do that, Chris. So if you want to share, you could also just sort of raise your hand. Um, I will try to keep tabs visually on uh, everybody's little screen to see if anybody has a, a hand up. Um, but you can also, if any of you see that there's a hand up, just shout it out to me so that we don't miss anybody. All right, I will get things started for us. Um, like I, I was saying in the beginning, if you missed it, that I've been curious as to how many different projects people have going at the same time. Um, and, and somebody was teasing me because I said, like, I think I'm a three project crocheter. And they said, you just started crocheting. How can you be a three project crocheter? I said, well, I, I just get bored if I'm doing the same thing back and forth like, over and over again. 
And so it was, it's kind of fun to have a couple different things to switch back and forth between. So right now I'm in the midst of, of three different things which aren't in any way, shape or form shareable. But I did finish this gigantic scarf a while back and this is like the hottest day we've had this year. So what a perfect day to wear a scarf. But um, I'm really excited about it because it's huge. Uh, it's an, a giant infinity scarf and it's just a really chunky nice Pretty. knit and it's super soft and it's it's enormous i don't know if you can really yeah it's beautiful see how big it is but i can't wait to wear it this winter because i just think i can i don't know i could probably use it as a blanket in the office like after <laughs> i'm inside um and i just love how cozy it looks i have visions of wearing it like if i'm flying somewhere like I can go to the airport and look all chic and put together and then take it off and use it as a blanket on the plane. No, I have no plans to fly anywhere, but in my head, this is my flying scarf because I think it'll make me look like a very chic world traveler, but I'm sure I'm wrong. So anyway, that was my big scarf and I was really excited that I completed it like from start to finish and I have a, a complete project. Liz, um, who we work with, I think Aaron's on our call too, and Kate and Stephanie, um, all staff members of Temperate Craft, you're all going to get probably pretty sick of seeing that scarf because I'm excited about it. I'm going to wear it a lot this winter. So that is my project to share with you today, but I would love to see some of the things that all of you have been working on. Nobody has stepped up yet in their chat to say they want to share something, but Patricia just raised her hand. I saw her. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Patricia, because I want to see what you are working on. Well, it's kind of hard to show it on um, the screen, but um, I, because I can't get into Artist Image Resource, into my print shop to print, um, I'm using up all my scraps. And it was kind of surprising to me how many I had that I hadn't used in quilt projects or wall projects. And so this is part, going to be part of the project I'm working with with Kate for the food justice thing next year. Yeah. And um, so I'm, I decided that all, all, you know, all the quilts were just so two dimensional and I've been making these accordion books. So I made one using the leftover prints from those quilts and it's kind of hard to, to see, but it, it'll open up to be like almost four feet. Whoops, just hit with my lip. But you can see that I've used all the, the leftover prints from the quilts and added language to them. And they're all quilted pages and then um, zigzagged around the edges and actually zigzagged together. So the pages are real flexible and it stands up nice and tight. And it's fused to Peltex, which is what is used in um, like the brim of a baseball hat. So when you sit these on a table, they're not, you, can, you don't have to have this many pages, but this is how many prints I had that I thought were so, still so pretty. So anyway, this is my accordion book that's going to be coming up in that exhibition next year. That's beautiful. Now, are the, the prints themselves are on fabric? Right, I hand dye all my fabric. So this patterning you see in the color um, is all hand dyed. Like on this guy, you can see the. So I hand dye all of my fabric, and then the images are put on with silk screen. Wow. So I silk screen at AIR, the north side. Mm -hmm. So the images are silk screened, and then the lettering, like these are the notations that were made by the photographers for the food, or the farm administration photographers from the 40s. So any notations that they made, if there were specific notations about like a, a, a portrait, I use that, I add that. Yeah. So I, I didn't like make that up. <laughs> you know, that's, just, that's the true story. Or in some cases, the name of the person or like this says the Davidson brothers. That was a notate. Oh, it's backwards, it looks like. Um, it, it's only on your screen. I must have my video reversed. But anyway, yeah, get the um, right way. you get the idea. Yeah. Where did you source the, the old images from? Um, the Library of Congress okay. online um, collection. Uh, it's, it's basically what I've been working on for the last 10 years is images from 
the Library of Congress. And um, they, you can download a really nice size file, you know, um, a big TIFF file to use for a silk screen. But if the file is too little, um, you can order a scan and they'll put it on a disk for you and give you a, I mean, I'm, the one that was at Fiber International a couple years ago at the Contemporary Craft, I actually printed out from a disk from the Library of Congress, the woman in the Japanese internment, I printed her out life size. So the print was actually over five feet tall. So you can really, um, you know, get great images from them. So that's my little project. It's beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, Thanks. Those of you who might not know, every other year, I believe, um, Contemporary Craft has an exhibition that is focused on social justice. Um, we were supposed to be opening this fall with our food justice exhibition, uh, but because of all the COVID things and everything getting pushed back, uh, food justice will now open in the fall of 2021. Um, but it's about food disparity um, within you know, the country, within the world, and artists who are working uh, with subject matters dealing with food and food inequality. Um, we've had mental health, we've had gun violence, um, there was one other now that, uh, uh, homelessness. And uh, they're really important, really powerful exhibitions. Um, so I really hope that everybody can get out to see that next fall. Um, we are hoping our opening exhibition at Contemporary Craft is Swoon, the street artist Swoon. Um, it's really going to be fantastic. I can't wait to see it all put together. Um, but I guess a little, I don't know if it's a spoiler, I don't think it's a secret. Um, two whole walls of the gallery are wallpapered with hand um, screen printed wallpaper. Um, it's different patterns on each wall, but it's really amazing to see normally like stark white gallery walls with this beautiful printed wallpaper on it. So we got that installed just before we all had to leave the building. But to see all of the artwork in the space um, with, with that backdrop, I think it's gonna be really outstanding. Um, and then next summer, we will have a transitional exhibition for a while that I don't think is confirmed yet. And then Food Justice will be opening um, fall of 2021. So I am really excited to see your piece in place, Patricia, and, to, and all of the other work. So hopefully you can all come join us for that. Thank you for sharing. All right. Who else? I don't want to have to put somebody on the spot. I'm sure somebody else has something they're working on that they would like to share. Anyone? Okay, Ray, go for it. So, um, okay, so I will show what I'm doing um, because, uh, well, my second one, I think I already showed you a while ago. It was um, the ornaments. Yeah, so I've, been, I've been crocheting ornaments. I'm not going to show them, but I've got about 20, 20, 24. <laughs> and, you know, it's really fun uh, to take the place of the other stuff that I'm doing. Um, so I don't know if I showed this. I don't think I showed anything last week. I don't remember. But anyway, um, I'm on, I'm still on a roll with uh, Bridget Funk's um, site. And so I'm attempting to make, um, I, this was my first shape that I was trying to do from her, which um, is not exactly what I wanted it to be. So today I shrank this one down a little bit more. And this one was challenging because I cut it in a spiral and realize that I need to um, wait for it to dry before I wrap it around another resist. Um, but, and, and it's just, it's still wet and it's still fuzzy. I'm using thin wool, which is fuzzy. And so I'm learning how to make these kind of like little silly things. I put some stuff on it just to be silly. And um, I'm learning to make a pre-felt and let it dry because it'll be a lot easier to handle. So this is just where I am right now. And um, I'm still learning how to do this, but this is like my last serious project. I've got one more idea on another challenging shape that I'll do later on. But um, I've got another piece on the table now that's, that will be another one of these guys. And interestingly enough, this is really all based on differential shrinkage 
because the colored part that you see on um, Ruby is done with four layers of wool and the part that's inside, the part that's like where the dips are, are only done with two layers of wool. So that's how you can get these differences in uh, the shape to happen. So um, they're really fun. It's very challenging. And um, it's, it's, it was scary to even get started. It was like, oh crap, you know, I'm gonna be able to do this. And, um, and then you just finally have to bite the bullet and go, tr go do it. So it's a matter, it's just a good, a big learning curve. And um, onward and uh, onward. <laughs> we'll see if Ray, it's upward. <laughs> Ray, how many of those little pieces or objects do you think that you have? All together, just like floating around your house. Oh, oh my God! I mean, I've been I've been working in felt for seven years. I have. I just had. I just bought two more very, 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 very large clear plastic containers. I could have a hundred pieces um, at least from the beginning, and I've actually given some away. And um, it's an addiction, you know, so I just, it's just something that I have to do. But I've gone from uh, glass shaped vessels to pods for seed pods, to um, abstract forms, to uh, you name it, I've tried it. And um, it's just, it's just the most exciting way to work because you start off with lint. It looks like lint. It looks like nothing. And you use your hands and soapy water and you get a shape. <laughs> and it's just, it's like a magic show. It's like a magic show all the time to, um, to be able to form something from nothing. And uh, it's just, and it's very physical and it gets rid of, you know, a lot of anxieties and tension. You just, roll it many, many, many hundreds of times and beat it up and you end up with something that's really fun. Great. So. I was talking to a neighbor um, on Friday, our street that I live on, it's just a one block long street, but in the summer, starting on Memorial Day weekend, every Friday we have a happy hour and all the neighbors come out and we usually rotate porches on the street. We do it all summer long. It's really fun. Uh, and now we're just having a social distancing happy hour in the middle of the street. So we all, it's a one way street, there is not much traffic. I think we had to flee maybe two times. Um, but I was talking to a neighbor and uh, she has tried felting and she was saying how she's like, it's, I just, it's so much work, it's really physical. And, and she just felt like it's, it's exhausting because I said, well, if you want to felt, let me just tell you, we have this workshop. And so she's like, oh, I don't know, I don't know if I can do it. So it, it, it is a physical process. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to do it all day long. You can do it for an hour or two and leave it and stop. I mean, it's not something that you have to worry about at all. Um, when I first started, I was mortified. And I, I thought, you know, you had to do this particular thing or that particular thing. And, and it turns out you can leave it. Um, you, can, you can get started. You can just leave it damp if you want to. You can let it dry if you want to. Um, you know, the only thing that if you're not going to use it for a long time, you want to, you want to get rid of the soap. So you just want to rinse it out a little bit and then you can put it away and let it dry for ages and then come back. So, um, it's not something that you're stuck with, but I love the physicality, uh, of it. I love the challenge of it. And I've just been learning so much recently, especially um, then I can put a lot more energy into it and push harder and it shrinks faster. <laughs> so, um, you know, and then you let it rest. It gets tired. It's like, I don't want to do this anymore. So you put it away for a day, you come back and you work on it again. It goes, okay, I'll shrink some more. So um, it's just a fascinating process. And uh, it's, it's just, yeah, I, I've fallen in love with this and, I hope I can keep doing it for a long time. And, uh, you know, something like this doesn't even require that much wool. So it's not like you're spending a fortune to make something, yeah. you know. 
But well, I would just, I, I can't even tell you how badly I would love to come and search through those giant plastic bins in your house and see <laughs> what creations are in there. I think it would be amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, there's castles. There's also uh, castles. Lots of castles. That would be great. Yeah. Fun things. Okay. Thank you, Ray. How, anybody else? Who else would like to share something that they are working on now or have worked on in the past? I'd love to see anything. Oh, Chris. Yay, I can see you waving. Okay, Chris, go for it. Oh, we can't hear you, Chris. You're muted. All right, there you go. Oh, there, there we are. are. Uh, yeah, I know. Well, you have to remember, I'm on a tablet, and as a result, I have to kind of wait for it to cue me. So, hi, I'm Chris Fondi. Um, I, I, uh, I finished one book that, that I'm kind of proud of, uh, but it's really big, and I don't know if it'll be able to show it to you, but this was the last page I did on it. Um, it's quite a big page and has one tip in in it. Um, they are, it's from a really big old art book that I had in when I was teaching. And it has a paper doll in a sleeve. And I just, I know what she means when she said when you fall in love with something and you just feel like you have to do it and you have to do it, which is why I have seven books going at the same time. Um, you just end up falling in love with the process. And the process, you know, it moves you along from thing to thing. And then you keep trying new things in it. And it's just been, it, it, it's a love affair. It's exactly what it is. It's a love affair. And uh, you do end up with an awful lot of books that I have no idea what I'm going to do with these lovely little things. But, you know, that's what I have. So while they were drying, I revisited um, something that I used to do uh, a while ago, which is beaded art dolls. And so I picked up some of my beads and I started to bead my dolls again. I don't know if you can see her, but she's done in black on um, weaver's cloth that I also hand dyed. And um, there, it's hard to show her because it's a very, it's a, there's a lot of stuff going on in it. Um, but this is the first one I've done in a long time. Uh, I do have a series of them that are going to be shown at the Space Gallery um, downtown. Um, the show was supposed to happen, of course, at the end of May. It's been postponed. Um, but a number of my dolls are, are going there. And so what I discovered because I hadn't been beating in a long time, is that, well, this is the new one. Where, where are you? There you are. She's purple. She's quite purple. Um, is that it takes a great deal of time and it does, the days pass very quickly. Um, I was lamenting the fact that with the books, I could work and work and work and no time has gone anywhere. But with these, um, they take so much, it's such a tedious process, but they take so much time that the day passes and, you know, this was three days of solid work. And I really like it. I like that. I like that it passes the time so quickly. So that's what I have been doing. That's wonderful. Thank you so much, Chris. Um, Somebody asked about your books. Um, how are they bound? Uh, well, it depends on the book. Um, these books are um, altered books. In other words, they're books that came from a library that was discarding books. And I bought them for a buck. And uh, I take them apart. Um, and I use the pages that are already existing in the book and I redesign them. I, I draw on them, I paint on them. Um, so this book was bound professionally. It's a, it's a sewn, hand sewn book. Um, the, the little ones, these are, are hand bound. I bind them myself. This is another accordion book like the one that we were shown before. Not quite the size or the, de or the 
beautiful um, quilted book, but this is a small, um, I call them Franken pages because the pages were actually scraps from my floor and then they were bound together in a little in a little book, which is what that is, just a small accordion book. Um, so there are several different ways to go about this. One is to use a sketchbook. Um, some people use old, um, those books from school, you know, that you used to get when you had to write out your composition books. Composition books, yeah. You know, those little really cheap ones. Um, but the ones that I find the, the most fun to do are the, the books that come from the library that were, you know, destined to go to the nearest you know, landfill or the next, the next fire. And then I'd rather take them and then change them in some way. So that's what these are. This is a uh, niche that I've been carving into the book. So, and the, the thing that's nice about the whole process is that you just keep finding different things to do. You, you know, you try this and then you think, okay, well that worked. What about, you know, what about if I kept the pages together, but I added, uh, a tip in and then start to create um, uh, windows and this one has a window in it that's got a stained glass piece in it um, so you just it's it's just exciting it's like her with her um, her felting it's exciting in where you go with it because you can go lots of different places it's really interesting I'm yeah. really enjoying it however they do have to dry between layers, and that's that's the, the catch, which is yeah. why there are so many of them yeah. actually sitting on my floor, drying. Understood. They're really fantastic. Thank you, Chris. Um, oh, somebody asked Chris if you remove any pages to accommodate the things that you're the layers you're adding. Yes, um, in a book that's being altered you often remove about half the pages, which is why it's recommended you use uh, sewn signature books because they'll come out as a folio, as a, a double page. Uh, if you use a glued spine, then as you pull pages out, which you have to do because you're going to end up um, engorging the pages with layers, um, if you use a, a glued spine, you, you really do substantial damage to the spine as you start to remove pages. Um, a sewn signature book is much sturdier through all the um, torture that you put it through and all the wet media that you put it through. Um, older books, fragile books can be used. I've used a couple that actually crumbled in my fingers as I went and I just reinforced them. and. and Kind of strong arm them into existence again. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, that's great. Um, I can't think of the jeweler's name right now, but there's a jeweler who makes uh, pieces out of old books. And um, so he'll take like Wuthering Heights and somehow glues the pages together and then almost carves them um, mm -hmm. as if you would like a block of wood. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll sort of color and dye so you can see some of the words on it. So it'll be like, well, here's the Withering Heights ring and, you know, here's the Tale of Two Cities earrings. And uh, it's a really fascinating, all the things that you can do with a, with a book. The only problem with that is that you, you end up, when, I, when you go, to, a, when you go to, re to, to get the books that you want to use, you don't always have the luxury of getting a book that has any particular meaning to you. Um, I, I find that um, some books are um, too precious to carve up or to tear apart. So my library has grown uh, in many cases. I found one um, that was really nice. Damn, it was so nice, but it turned out to be a first edition. So I was like, ah, damn, I really <laughs> wanted to take it apart. But now, no, I, I can't do that. It's sitting on my shelf. <laughs> I can take it out and look at it, but that's, that's all I can do. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for sharing your creations, Chris. I think everybody really loves them. I, I want to talk to you about a workshop, okay? I'm okay. there. All right. Awesome. Um, I think Debbie said that she has something she'd like to share, and so I would oh, love to see good. what she's been up to. Good. So, Debbie, you can unmute yourself, and let's yeah. see what you're up to. Okay. Well, my book is a simple book. It is. Um, it uh, was one I made a couple weeks ago, part of Renegades. 
uh, Chris's group Renegades a couple weeks ago, our quote unquote assignment was mark making. And, and so I, I uh, started watching some YouTube videos and found, correct me if I'm wrong, Chris, Red Queen Art Creations. And um, she has some really interesting exercises. So I followed her. The title of this book is Lockdown. And there's a little tiny lock and key on the closure. Um, so this is a one sheet book. It was a sheet of mixed media paper that was uh, 11 by 14 and then folded down into eight sections. And it's just some mark making. And then you can see that I, I glued the pages together so I can't actually unfold it to show you the one page. Um, and it's then simply uh, pamphlet bound into the cover. And then I, um, I wrote a little uh, quarantine haiku, which is quiet loneliness, creativity rises up, bringing a calm peace. So that was a simple little book I made during the during our quarantine and then another one that i finished we were from the book arts group uh stephanie harden martin uh, taught us this one last year and you're not going to get the full effect it's called the shrigley binding and it's you're basically creating little photo holders so each of these is one sheet of paper and the corners are folded and glued and then they're sewn together in a in an accordion style and then I just I just used in the center or you know I instead of photos I put in just some of my doodles but it's, if I can get there, so you can see the corners, how this is folded. So that was, that's what I've been doing the last two weeks and some doodling that I made into some cards. I do have a project in mind. Um, Donna Penoyer is not on today, is she? She's not here today, no. Okay. <laughs> because she'll yell at me. Um, I, I've had this, I've got it all planned out. I've had it in my head for three weeks now, but that inner critic keeps going, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. And so I, I um, have been hesitating to get back to the metal clay, um, but I'm going to do it. It's, it involves using a piece of a broken lamp work glass bead. And I have never done, I know others have, but I have never fired a piece of lamp work along with the metal clay. So I will do it because as Donna said, so you wind up with a lump of silver that you can do something with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, I, a friend of mine always says to me, it's only silver, it's only silver, like, it's okay. <laughs> I know, but I mean, right now the price of silver is not too bad, but <laughs> True. it does go up a little bit. So that's that's what I've been up to. It's great, Debbie. I, first of all, your poem is fantastic, your haiku. Um, I think Thank it's you. the perfect haiku for the times we're in right now. And the book itself is beautiful. I love the um, restrained color palette you used. I think that was really fantastic. Um, I also think your doodles are frameable. So I, I ha think you shouldn't call them doodles. They're, they <laughs> look like much more than a doodle to me. Thank you. Yeah. Of course. All right. Thank you so much, Debbie. Uh, Julie said she has something to share, so I would love to see what she has been up to. Julie, if you can unmute. Oh, as soon as, yeah, as soon as you said um, old things, I said, oh, I have some old things. <laughs> and these are really old. Um, back in the 90s, I think, um, I learned how to quilt, and I made uh, can you see these? Let me get a little closer yeah. to the camera. How's that? Perfect. Okay, these are handmade boxes. They're actually constructed. And I usually, in this case, I didn't put anything inside. But here's, here's a, this was some very nice fabric tape that I got in France. And then I padded and quilted 
a wreath, a uh, feather wreath on the uh, top. Um, and then there's a little bit of a tab here with made out of, um, uh, what's that ribbon? Grow grain ribbon. 60% of women are still wearing pads that leak. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Okay. Um, so that's one. I would try to, so I taught classes on making the boxes and then I, to make it more interesting, I also taught the quilting techniques. So here's, the, here's another box um, made with upholstery fabric. Uh, and then I trapuntoed the uh, wave on the front. You can see, and there's some French knots. Can everybody see that okay? More or less. And then when you open this box up, there is um, a trapunto shell on the inside. You may not be able to see that very well. Yeah, it's beautiful, Julie. Yeah, I really enjoyed designing them, and, and, and you can make any size you want. They're made with mat board. Two, two pieces of mat board for each facet of the box. Um, let's see. I have a couple more. This one, this one I just love because I, I really like old um, Amish quilts. So here's a quilt block. I think it's a lemon star, um, but it's a box that you can open and keep stuff in. And last of all, well, almost last. <laughs> uh, this is one that was uh, meant a lot to me. Um, this is a batik print that I really loved. I made it into a jacket that, I, of course, I never wore. But um, I also took the scraps to make the sides of the box. And then the top is a... Um, a Celtic interlace, uh, which is also very lightly trapuntoed. And then on the inside, and this one is, this is, um, this is based on Robert Frost's poem about the secret. Uh, we, we dance round in a ring and suppose, but the secret sits in the middle and knows. And I thought this was a nice secret inside. Um, and last of all, Really, I, I, I made an octagonal box. That was the, that was a lot of work. No, again, same thing, but once you piece your, your um, this is a, a the, the uh, corners were knocked off a castle wall block, and then I had to cut and to work out just how big, you know, using geometry and all that. Anyway, that was a lot of fun. I haven't done these in years. <laughs> I don't plan to do any more, but, but they were a lot of fun at the time. We have a couple of questions, Julie, um, about how the sides are put together and uh, if, if there's any glue involved in the process or if everything yes. is sewn. No, it's, it's, there's a lot of glue involved. Um, uh, so for the side of the box, you, you have, you cut one strip fairly long to accommodate all four sides of the box and then a smaller, that, that's the fabric. And then you cut rectangles of mat board. Um, you will cover them with your inner fabric each individually, but then you, um, you glue them down to the outer fabric in a line and then, then, then you just have this strip that, that forms a square. <laughs> uh, the, the, the top of the uh, Celtic interlace box is actually machine stitched, but at every point that where two lines join, I had to pull the top thread through to the underside with the bobbin thread and I knotted it by hand. So it looks, it was a hell of a lot of work, <laughs> but I really wanted it to be quote unquote perfect. Uh, so that's, that's why it looks, uh, it was not hand stitched, it was machine stitched. Make, that makes my brain hurt, Julie. To, yeah, yeah. To, to, <laughs> that's why I don't do it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you all. They're really beautiful, all of thank them. You. I, it's, um, yeah, they, they're ex exquisite. Thank, thank you, so you so much, much. for sharing them. Um, Stephanie said that she might have something to share. Are you there, Stephanie? Yes. Hi, everyone. Uh, so after I graduated from college, um, I thought of ways to connect with my friends. Um, so every year I would make a handmade uh, postcard or card to send to them around Christmas time. Uh, it started as kind of like an illustration hand-drawn card and then it kind of 
still develop into what I was interested at the time. So one year I uh, received a car from a friend who did block carving. So um, that kind of inspired me to start my own uh, block carving uh, cards um, to send to my friends. So um, first it started with um, kind of like for the Chinese New Year pick year. So I made two versions of it. One is for my Chinese friends with the hot pot and one is for the more traditional kind of Christmas or like wintery kind of scene. Um, so everything I learned from it is kind of self-taught. Um, so you can see a lot of it like printing kind of wrinkles and I did a lot of testing. And at first I carved the letters um, as they should on the blocks and when I print them, they're kind of reversed. So I had to figure out ways to carve a separate stamp so I could get like a positive kind of um, print out of it. And so it just like continues um, my block carving journey because it's so meditative. Um, I would draw a lot of sketches to see what kind of illustration I would like to make and then just start carving on the blocks. So this was for this year, the year of the rat. Um, so at first it started as a Christmas card project and then I procrastinate. Sometimes it, be, it becomes a happy new year card and later on it becomes the Chinese new year card, which is around February of the year. So it just kind of, and I test out different blocks. So the pink rubber, um, the grayish one, and then I kind of um, try out the linoleum as well. Um, the, these are rubber, um, kind of speedball rubber. So they don't have any wood backing. These are kind of easier to print with because you could really press down onto it. I've found these are a little bit harder to print, but it's just might be because I didn't really learn from someone who knows. I'm just trying things out. So, so I've tried um, kind of do watercolor backgrounds first on a really thin piece of paper and then print my blocks onto them just to figure out how I could add colors to my prints. Um, but it's just being really fun to like look at Instagram videos, figuring out different techniques. Like this one, I've seen people do two color printing with just one block um, by cutting out kind of the figure in the middle. So you could um, kind of easily apply different colors onto the blocks. And, but this is the result with just one color printing, but I could make the squirrel into a different color if I want. And then um, kind of trying out just really simple stamp carving and then make them into smaller cards, adding some pen and ink kind of drawings to uh, create different variations of design. So not necessarily craft, but I would think the carving part is kind of like craft, but the rest of it is art. <laughs> I definitely think that anytime you're you're carving, if you're altering the, the original state of the material, I, I feel like it's a craft process for sure. And I know one thing I was surprised about, Stephanie, when we had a woodblock carving workshop uh, in February, I just always imagined um, with block printing that like you take the block and push it down onto your paper. And we did the reverse with the wooden blocks. Like we laid the block down and then put the paper on that. And then, um, Actually, the instructor said she really likes rubber, um, like knobs, drawer knobs that you can get at Home Depot, that those work really well to rub with. So we had a bunch of knobs we'd turn upside down and then rub it on the paper, which would like push it down onto the block because she in her studio has a big like press that she can use, but for our purposes, we didn't. And so I was, I was always surprised by that. That it was like the paper went like on top of the block instead of the other way around for yeah, this different it's material. Yeah, I think you could do a couple of different ways. Um, usually you could line them up. Uh, you could line up the paper and then you could put the blocks on it. Usually it's for rubber blocks because you could press down to it and then kind of get all sides. I think wood block prints, kind of like the 
the linoleum prints, they are kind of more solid. So you get the paper on top of it and then you press down on the paper. Um, and I, I have friends who told me uh, when I have difficulties printing the linoleum blocks to kind of spray some water on the paper, um, get it kind of semi moist and then you press down on the paper, it mm -hmm. prints better. So there are so many ways to do things and it's fun to kind of experiment a little. Yeah. And, and everybody in the chat is agreeing that we like the little extra marks. <laughs> that uh, even if they weren't intended to be there, they, they certainly add character and it's really cool. Yeah. And you could easily do it at home too. I went to the Carnegie Museum of Art. Um, they, they had a little hands-on station when they had the Haku uh, Hiroshiga, uh, a Japanese print exhibition. So they took um, kind of thin sheets of styrofoam and then like just get like a kind of wooden tool to press into the styrofoam and then you could like get watercolor or acrylic print on top of it and then you could press into paper to make your own prints. Kind of like a one-time really simple print that way. So just kind of interesting. Like there's easier ways to do things and there's more professional ways of doing things. Yeah and I know um, Blick Art Materials on uh, Walnut Street and Shady said you can get the linoleum blocks or the rubber blocks uh, it's it's not a terribly expensive hobby to pick up if you want to uh, give it a try and uh, and try try your hand at some carving and um, I know we did the the woodblock carving workshop and afterwards mm -hmm. thought it was be really fun to do this with rubber wood was challenging it was really fun but um, but I think the rubber would be really fun to try too or linoleum so thanks for sharing Stephanie yeah um, oh somebody says you can use styrofoam meat trays with kids. Um, but before they have meat in them. <laughs> that's probably, yeah, that's a good idea. Oh, and erasers work well for small stamps. That's another, another tip, which would be really fun. Okay, do we have anybody else who would like to share anything today? I think, I think everybody got a chance who said they wanted to. So um, I'm really glad that you took the time to join us today after the long weekend. I hope that you'll join us next week. Um, it's the last scheduled show and tell. There might be more, and I know that it's something we're going to carry on into the future. So um, please join us next week. Hopefully by then we, I will have some online workshops that I can let you know about um, and an update on contemporary craft and where things stand and um, how close we are to being able to open our doors to you and welcome you to our new space. Uh, in the meantime, thank you for joining us today. I hope that you had a good time. I love seeing everybody's projects. Um, and there are many of you I'm going to be snagging to come teach for us because I think we all want to be learning from each other after getting to see the beautiful things we're all making. So um, thank you very much for joining us. Have a really great day. Bye, everyone. <laughs>